Well, it's a crack, everyone. It's Nathan here, aka the Rambling Kern, and head instructor of Kern School of Combat. So, um, apologies for the delay in videos. Uh, as you can see, I have moved studios, so obviously I had to get this space sorted out and get things done. I have a lot going on in my own life at the moment, so just trying to keep things in order. Um, and I wanted to continue a video series that I've taken quite a big break on, um, but I do have many more parts to go on it um, and certain parts of that I'm working on at the moment. So a uh, commenter asked um, about um, some of the clothing I was wearing during one of my hiking videos. Um, and the question was basically, what are the small shorts that you can see me wearing under my um, Lena? Um, now I do have a video on the Lena itself, so if you wanna go check that out, you'll find that on my channel. Um, so the shorts in question are these. And I have two pairs of these, so could have worn one or the other. Um, but this is the item in question. So these are linen braids. Um, very simple uh, drawstring closure on them. And uh, common throughout a lot of the medieval period, even into the earlier, um, kind of early medieval and slightly uh, pre medieval periods. Um, very very basic design uh, however it's one that comes in a lot of different designs and um, so i'm going to bring up some images as i discuss this and um, bring them up here on screen so you can have a look um, one of the things to note with the braids is that kind of like shorts today there's loads of different lengths of these so you have kind of long um baggier versions you have much shorter tighter versions um, and everything else in between now these were worn for quite a large period in history um, and one of the things that is interesting to note about braids uh, and these item in particular is how they are worn in conjunction with other items so um, during certain parts of the medieval period regular trousers like we wear today um, as in you know something that you climb in and both legs are in and you have a um, basically a area covering your um you know groin <laughs> etc uh, this area here essentially um was quite popular in and out of different periods however there was a different style of clothing that became very popular and kind of um you would see it come and go just like fashion today certain items come and go and that is the uh i hope i'm not butchering this the chasse or chasses i don't know the correct pronunciation of it basically these are single legged uh, trousers so instead of um having a pair of trousers these are as a friend jokingly said to me they're essentially like medieval chaps um basically you have pants that go around one leg and around the other and then they're held on usually by a suspender belt these were very popular like i say at various different periods um and again come in all different shapes sizes and designs um, and that is where we get to the current. Um, so unfortunately we don't have any pictorial evidence of braids being worn, nor do we have any finds of them. We don't have any finds of linen, mainly due to linen does not survive in bogs. The clothing, the clothing that we do have um, is not linen. We have loads of wool, loads of leather, but unfortunately linen does not survive in bogs. Um, the acidity of it eats away the linen and we're left with nothing. However, um, all throughout the period, braids are being worn in other parts of Europe, so it is somewhat safe to assume that they're being worn here. However, for myself, um, I know there's going to be a lot of people who are, you know, a little bit pedantic about these things and entirely right to be so. Um, for myself, the main thing I wanted was to have something under my uh, lena so that I wasn't uh, flashing people as they walked by because. Seeing me hiking to the wilderness in my current outfit, I'm sure is a bit of enough of a shock to people without being uh, exposed to things they shouldn't. So that's where these came in. Um, I have a few pairs of these. Um, again, the design is very basic. Um, basically, middle part, two legs, and then a simple um, drawstring closure, um, which I've actually just lost the string on. Um, so. I know some people will say, oh, well, did the Irish have, um, let's say like woolen shorts or did they have um, any kind of particular 
uh, clothing items at the, at the time that we know of? And the answer to that is, we don't know. Um, they might have. Um, simply put, I have still find any evidence of them. If anyone can share any evidence of that, please do. It would be great to know. Um, however, uh, the Kilcommon outfit, which is the outfit that my uh, inner, um, my jacket, which I also have a video on, uh, the find that that is based on, the trousers that we have there are very intriguing. Um, and I'll bring up the um, bit of a pattern from Reconstructing History. Um, I really recommend their uh, website. It is a fantastic resource for clothing and period clothing of all different periods from, I think, kind of almost up to World War II and way back to the antiquity. Um, and they have very good detailed patterns of the Kilcommon outfit. And you will see with the trousers that they're actually basically seem to be like chaussé, but that were later made into pants. Um, and to the point where I actually ordered them as a regular pair of uh, chaussé. And only when they arrived after having further reading did I find out that, oh no, they're actually were trousers. Um, and you'll see in the design, the classic kind of um, high front, which was um, used with the belt and um, different kind of uh, fastening methods, but usually some sort of a uh, cord with an eyelet um, tied on onto a uh, belt that would hang just above the waist. Um, these trousers are kind of fascinating. They're kind of odd in their design, um, and I'm gonna do a separate video on those in their own right. But the reason I bring them up is because they do very much look like a pair of these, which would kind of lend credence to Irish people wearing these. Now, I know some people would say, well, did they just go nude under them? Possibly, but I highly doubt it. Um, a very Catholic country at the time. So indecency and being uh, exposed would be a little bit of a, a no-no to say the least. So it's unlikely that that was something that was happening. However, entirely possible. Now, there is a strange um, popularity of shorts and kind of three quarter lengths up to quite short shorts in Ireland uh, throughout Irish history. You probably heard me bring up the um, warrior from the Book of Kells. I'll bring him up again. Um, and this gentleman looks like he's almost wearing three quarter lengths, um, possibly linen, possibly wool, who knows. But you can see from that period all the way through that being barefoot with short pants was extremely popular. Now, again, like I've said in previous videos and probably as you've seen from my hikes, it seems like quite a popular thing, and a sensible thing to do when hiking through Ireland. And that's where these come in. Um, so that's where I got a few pairs of these made up to test out, see how they are. They felt up great. Uh, linen's a super, super durable fabric. Um, and of course, at the time, these were basically underwear. Um, even though they were kind of worn on the outside, they were essentially underwear. Um, now you'll see in some of the illustrations that I'll be showing that often these were worn, um, you know, in a way where you could easily access them. So chances are it was just an easy way to relieve yourself if you needed to. You could take them off in a hurry. Um, so very interesting bit of kit. One that spreads across a huge time span. And I know it does have somewhat of a questionable provenance for Ireland. At the time, like work aren't wearing them, we don't know, but it seems extremely likely that they were. Hence why I chose to wear them and why I wear them under my uh, garments. And let's face it, they were probably wearing some form of linen underwear, or at least certain sections of society would have been, so it's not really a, much of a stretch to be wearing them. If you're interested in getting a pair of these, uh, I have two pairs, one from Spes Medieval Wear, one from Mattholes. Um, I will put links to both of them. Of course, you can make these yourself. Uh, there's plenty of great videos on these. The pattern for them are very simple. Um, just linen um, with a few simple stitches. And of course, like I said, your um, regular old cord drawstring. So if you have any questions on that, uh, please do let me know. Um, I do hope to make a good few videos in the coming weeks. Um, if there is any particular videos you would like to see, do let me know. Um, I am in the process of making videos for my Patreons. Um, 
or for Patreon, for my patrons, I should say. Uh, so if you're interested in joining that, please let me know. And um, I'll be putting up some videos on the topic of our stick fighting and uh, training, um, solo training and all that sort of thing uh, very soon. So yeah, like I said, things have been a little bit delayed and obviously just trying to get my studio set up and moved. So once again, if you have any questions, do let me know. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, we've just hit 1400 subscribers, which is fantastic and also a great number it's uh, right in the medieval period which is phenomenal and so thank you very much everyone really do appreciate the support if you're interested in classes we run them every tuesday and uh, do feel free to get in touch and um, thank you once again and slow.